M Drive really started with, with a chap called um, Professor Eric Laithwaite. And in 1974, he gave a lecture um, at the uh, Royal Institution, Christmas lecture, uh, <coughs> in which he um, claimed that a gyroscope could be used as a thruster. The Ministry of Defence uh, suddenly got interested in this <coughs> and um, wondered if it could be used for missile control, which was the sort of thing we were working on. Um, <coughs> so they came to us to, uh, to evaluate the concept. Now we looked at it very carefully and decided that um, <coughs> no, it couldn't be done mechanically. Uh, but I did then put forward a, a, a suggestion that it could be done electromagnetically. Once I'd convinced myself that the theory was correct, I carried out a little bit of experimentation in my garage in the traditional way. And then I explained the concept um, <coughs> uh, to my employers, who were at that stage Matra Marconi Space. Technical director um, rejected the idea outright and actually suggested that if I mentioned it again, it would um, <coughs> my career would suffer. So at this point, I, I um, <coughs> decided to leave Marconi and set up my own company, uh, Satellite Propulsion Research Limited. And along with uh, a group of long-suffering shareholders, uh, we started our work on developing M-Drive. Well, we were soon awarded a grant from the UK government um, and they continued to fund this research. Um, the work progressed through um, a feasibility study which used an experimental thruster through to a demonstrator engine um, that could actually produce eight grams of thrust. Uh, in total, this was about a five-year program <clears throat> and we were pretty pleased with the results. Uh, so when New Scientist wanted to write a feature article, we agreed. The article was published in September 2006 and uh, caused a bit of controversy. Well, I, I actually have no trouble with healthy scepticism. Um, however, I was very shocked by the level of personal abuse that came back. And indeed, uh, I still get some insults on some of these uh, internet forums. But I guess I've got pretty immune to it now and just put it down to very strange people being out there on the internet. By 2008, we were involved in a number of meetings with the, um, <coughs> the UK defence authorities. Um, this culminated in a meeting uh, on the 10th of December um, uh, in the depths of the Pentagon, um, fairly high level presentation, uh, it was attended by the US Air Force, DARPA, NASA and it was actually chaired by the director of the um, National Security Space Office. The UK Ministry of Defence and the American Department of Defence are interested in M-Drive. Would clearly be very useful on any um, intelligence gathering platform uh, or communications platform. Uh, essentially, it provides good maneuverability, continuous maneuverability, uh, with stealth uh, characteristics. In particular, it enables um, low Earth orbits to be maintained, where the um, it, which gives much better sensor resolution. <coughs> And uh, clearly M-Drive has no exhaust signature uh, and, and therefore is uh, inherently very stealthy. In the next decade, um, M-Drive technology will start to be being used all over the world. I think most people will only really notice M-Drive um, when they can call up a personal air vehicle. It will arrive and land vertically outside their house. It will take them wherever they want to go, uh, quietly, comfortably, safely, um, uh, and they won't get stuck in traffic jams. <laughs> That's the sort of consumer um, uh, application that, um, uh, that we're looking towards. But there will be a much more serious application, <clears throat> and that will be when we can use M-Drive for low-cost access to space, and we can start launching solar power satellites. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Once you can get low-cost access to space, then you can solve the world's energy problems.